Hey, Nitro here. Now, if you haven't noticed, or if this is your first time stopped by the channel, we here at Big Dork Energy have been playing a fair amount of 10 Chambers Collective's 2021 release, GTFO. Also, if this is your first time here, we're a group of nerds who like talking nerdy stuff and gaming and making fools of ourselves. So hey, if that sounds like something you'd enjoy, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, smash the bell, Whatever floats your boat, we appreciate the support. So for those of you who may not know, GTFO, aka Get the Frag Out, because that's definitely what we all thought, right? Is a four-player cooperative horror shooter that puts players and friends to the test in unforgiving environments versus legions of enemies. Enemies who, might I add, get increasingly creative and appropriately more dangerous as your team progresses through the various missions included in each rundown. Basically a flavorful word for season. Oh, there's a locker in here. Now, why should you be looking to try this game out for yourself? I asked myself the exact same question multiple times, whenever Steam would have a sale and it would drift past my notice as I scrolled endlessly. I'd take a look at it, be enticed for a moment, and then I'd move on. Not to any fault of the game, but to my own caffeinated squirrel attention span. One night, though, I was asked to join my cousin's weekly sessions. I figured, now I have a reason to buy this game, which happened to be on sale once again. So I picked it up. We drop into a bleak and dark facility filled with these creepy pulsating cosplayers for the movie T. They respond and awaken to, let's see, the sound? light, movement, yikes, pretty much everything pisses them off. Oh, have I mentioned yet that this game is a horror shooter with serious stealth and coordination elements? You'll often find yourself and your teammates attempting to set up Olympic level synchronized assassinations in an attempt to clear a room. As you quickly find, just running and gunning leads to a lack of ammunition, health items, and life eventually. A decent sized arsenal gives you a ton of combinations for your playstyle, but a severely sparse supply of ammunition often leads to difficult decisions on where to divvy supplies when the fighting is done. Some very interesting special equipment can help in the matter, from the various turrets, to mines, a tracker, and even the sea foam launcher, a very cool toy used to shore up the defenses of a door and buy precious time to complete objectives, reload, or escape to a better position to face down a wave. There's a lot of room to play in this game with strategy, as its difficulty can lead to the occasional failure. Occasional. Okay. Okay, you get the point. Each death is a hard-learned lesson and challenges the team to reevaluate their approach to a certain security door, or an extra tricky room, or even a boss. Shots and artillery and artillery. Watch out. The enemies at their most basic can be annoying and overwhelming in numbers and jerky movements and attacks. Meanwhile, the more advanced creatures, without getting too far in the room, gain interesting traits or abilities that greatly increase the challenge and the general fun of the game. I myself have been playing for about six months, and every time I think I've seen all the enemies, a new one appears. Alongside all these nifty gadgets and intriguing foes, you've got a really cool and somewhat unique element to the game. While oh, there are other games that words. have done similar, terminals in this particular instance offer an intense immersion that puts you right into the rundown. Some objectives may have you access terminals to locate or ping a key item. What I find really cool is the use of terminals to query items or to reboot an old reactor, or begin filtering the dangerous gas out of certain areas of the map. It truly adds some world flavor and an interesting aspect to an already immersive experience. Best of all, it could take weeks of going in with a new plan or managing to pull it off in one go. Each drop feels a bit different as enemies and items often spawn in different quantities and locations, but at the end of the day, when you make it to that extraction point, whether it took half an hour or two and a half hours, it feels incredibly satisfying to notch another mission done. 
from moments of intense sphincter clenching action to hilarious failure of epic proportions leading to a team wipe. GTFO delivers a great experience to those seeking a bit of a different challenge. Hell, if you want to see for yourself, we've got a whole playlist of our experiences so far in Rundown 7 that are full of cheap laughs, memes, and a masterclass on what not to do. Make sure to check the link at the side of the screen if that's all appealing. We hope this video has been helpful, even if it's not our usual fare. And if this video has sparked an interest and you try GTFO, let us know what you think in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. I've almost called it. We'll see you next time. I'm a little bit too. I haven't seen anybody. That's it. Oh my god, it's dead. That or it's falling down for no reason. I don't know, but I'm going to grab more ammo for myself because I'm low. I need ammo really bad.